Welcome to Church of the Chair, where we celebrate all the things we do while seated. I'm your host, E, here today with my co-host, Chad Lutzke, and we are working on a collaborative novel. Uh, today, I don't know what the game plan is, because I was rambling off about this uh, new book. <coughs> well, not new book, but this book I just finished. So uh, how you want to handle today, Chad? I, I don't I don't care. You can <clears throat> share your screen. I'll share mine. It doesn't matter. I'll just, I'm just going to do the same thing I was doing yesterday and just start okay. going over while, while you, maybe you're adding stuff, but whatever. Gotcha. doesn't matter. I wonder, Viking, I'm probably going to go back and read from the beginning <clears throat> all the way down to where I stopped and kind of get back into it because I'm working on another project uh, at the moment too so i gotta i literally have to come back in here and remind myself what we're doing every single morning because <clears throat> i close off my day right in the other project okay uh so that's what i'll do um i will uh just to get everybody caught up to where we're at i will share my screen to begin with at least um as i'm reading through what's going on um i might read some stuff out loud so if you want to mute me chad go ahead um <laughs> But yeah, I'm just, I'm going to go through, uh, I know you're still working on it. You're going to be working on it as we're going along, oh, but I will at least get some of the Sorry. stuff. Hang on a second. I didn't oh. know. I didn't know he was in here. It's a ferret. Sorry. I, I want to boot the snoop. <laughs> I want to boot the snoop. <clears throat> They're hearing something crawling around the floor. I'm like, what the? <laughs> I'm glad we're not writing a horror story. There's something crawling around my feet. Ferret friend. Yeah, thank you for giving me the chance to boop the snoot, Chad, before you left. <laughs> I had to boop the snoot. Anyways, uh, is that a Schechter behind you? The purple guitar? Yeah. yeah. I thought I recognized body style on the headstock. Yeah, That's I just nice got, a, got it uh, toward the end of last year. It's a nice <clears throat> guitar. I had never even played one until uh, I think my son brought one over here, and I was like, "This ain't bad." So I priced them, and I bought one. Yeah, Schecter's been. They were the, for the longest time. Their whole deal was we make the cheapest seven strings and eight strings and all that stuff. Uh, the the extra string guitars. Um, and when they first came out, their pickups were trash. But uh, that changed very quickly. I was impressed. It was like nine maybe 10 months after their first line popped out, they, uh, they switched pickups and uh, came back. They got a deal with the Deftones, I believe, and one other uh, hmm. big group. And uh, uh, the, the quality over at Schecter just went through the roof. Thanks, Viking. Yeah, uh, I love this shirt. You got the gorgeous color, too. Oh, yeah. That's sexy as hell. I like that. I like the inlays, too. The birds. Reminds me yeah. of the PRS. Yep. It does. Nice. It, it it looks like a PRS now that I see it up close. Kind of similar. That's very nice. Yeah, I'm super jealous. None of my guitars that I have now cost over like two hundred dollars. I got a a BC Rich knockoff, a Warlock knockoff. Um, <laughs> that uh, it's it's it's, it's kind of like a knockoff of a knockoff because it's LTD, which is ESP's cheaper version. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's the body style of a of a, of a warlock and I, I love that guitar but it's cheap as fuck pickups suck um i also have an ibanez g something um that i paid like 50 bucks for at a pawn shop i just it, if i cleaned it up probably be at most like a hundred dollar guitar i think they were 300 when they first came out the most expensive guitar i have is my acoustic which is a martin um and that's not the, nowhere near the most expensive one i've ever bought i bought a jackson kelly when i was uh in, right after right out of high school i saved up uh eight hundred dollars and i got uh the marty freeman version of the uh jackson not jackson kelly um those are wild guitars man but it was a pain in the ass to play so it sounds like you got a bunch of uh like metal guitars oh yeah yeah it's funny because i don't even play metal anymore it's more blues and uh shit like that um, I'm usually covering the shit I hear on the radio because that's all I listen to nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just doing my own my own stuff. Uh, I have a folk 
cover of the Ramones Pet Cemetery that I've been working on for probably six, seven years, ever since I started the YouTube channel, because I've been specifically working on it for the channel. I wanted to use it as maybe an outro or something for my videos. All that kind of fell through, but uh, I can't, I have a problem with D, what is it, D minor? The it, It's the way it, it, my fingers don't work like that. Like I have no problem with power chords, A's, E's, C's, geez none of that none of that stuff bothers me but a d minor and the opening chord of that is d minor and i'm self-taught so i don't know how to like rearrange it to to use another scale to use another note in the same format you know kind of deal um or stay in the same or do it in a different key is what i was looking for um but uh it's i i love it um and but i also can't play and sing at the same time and i don't like i i sing better while i'm while i have my guitar so if I record one and then I record the vocals, the vocals to me aren't as good as the uh, as the guitar playing or the, the vocals are better than guitar playing. It, it just doesn't seem to match up unless I actually play it together. And I have a problem playing that D. My brain freezes right when I have to go to the D minor because I have to think about where I put my fingers unlike any other chord. But one of these days, I'm going to get with someone who knows how to do this shit. And I'm going to be like, hey, will you change the chords for me so I don't have to do this D, D minor bullshit? Anyways, I guess I could just do a power chord, but then my... Yeah, is, yeah, you could do that. It just doesn't sound good on it. I don't think power chords sound good on acoustic, unless it's like the full bar, all you know, all the way across. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, but I, I, I could probably do it if I paid more attention to it. But yeah, I've been working on that song for like six, seven years, and it's, it's ridiculous why I have not figured it out yet. Um, all right, let's see here. Share, share, screen a nation, planet caravan. All right, let's go back. No, I'm not, not supposed to be on discord. Okay. All right, folks. Now, Chad, if you want to mute me, I might just read this whole thing out loud just to get back into the, okay. the feel of it. Gravel in my hands feels like teeth knocked loose when I'm kicked to the face. I choose a good sized moment and pitch it toward the Diana had Rita used to keep her jewelry in before she sold it. The can sits in the dirt where grass used to grow before so much motor oil, dog piss, or bonfires killed it. Actually, I probably won't read it out loud completely because it'll take me this entire stream to. Uh, <laughs> If I stumble on anything, I'll probably read that out loud. Okay.
ออกเฮ้ยเออ I don't know if you can hear me dude but my local library is going all in on these fucking bigots they're uh they are fighting them tooth and nail to keep the books where they're supposed to be because the, there's people here that want either books removed or uh held behind the the counter so they put it behind the counter until a vote and it says Prattville Library Board returns books to shelves declines to move others fuck yeah keep them books out there brothers sisters keep them out there
Thank you very much, J Rod. Appreciate the support.
Yeah, but...
Hey, Vamp, how you doing? Long days and pleasant nights, Sentry. How are you doing? Did you, did you get through it? Uh, almost. I'm almost to where I was yesterday. No, I meant what? Uh, reading. Did you did you go back up and read? Yeah, I did. Um, okay. I'm I'm through all the stuff that you've changed. Okay. Up until the point um, that our paths diverged. Okay. Yeah, now now I'm just waiting for you to see to see how you blend if you if you blend anything that I had there at the end of that chapter. Okay. So, yeah, I did uh, stop when I, I I need to go back through that. I also don't want to go too much farther in the next chapter until you sign off on or tell okay. me you want to change um, what I. Uh, Okay. The setup for the, for the, how he got the coke. All right. Maybe I should read ahead without, <clears throat> without changing anything, just to see where we're at. I know I'm gonna have to change stuff like the chips and whatnot. Um, mm -hmm. I think I have other mentions to the chips. I know that was supposed to be ramen. Actually, while you're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and take a break while I got a second. Okay. Um, get up and walk around. And then uh, when I come back, we can talk about where we're at. All right. I, I will share my screen then. Okay. All right. Let me, let me remove this one. Stop sharing. Screen. There we go. All right. All right I'll be back. Uh, Sentry, all is well. That's good. That's good. I'm glad you're doing well. I'll be back in about five, ten minutes, guys. I think you got a. Okay, well, I guess I won't be able to share my screen then. Because I can't put it up there on my own. I need permission. So we won't we won't share my screen then.
I didn't even want to show you that she could take that.
considered acting up. Because I had like stood up and then not been able to see anything. And then kept woke up back on the couch like a second ago. But I knew what was happening. Well, that's like I would stand up and <laughs> Thanks for uh, hanging out, everybody. I hope that you are uh, got your own thing you're working on, too, or that you're finding this uh, even just a little bit in, in, encouraging to get some words in if writing is your thing. Couldn't share my screen because uh, I tried to get your attention, but um, oh, sorry, okay. Okay. <laughs> my bad. What happened with the screen? Uh, you have to give like permission, or you have to you have to put it up there. I think. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay, that's well, okay. if you want to throw it up now, that's fine. Hey, Alec. Hey, W R V three forty one. I'm glad you're doing well, Alec. I forgot about that to show did. Ugh. What happened to my <laughs> my window? What the heck? Scooby Dooby Doo. I'm doing fantastic now. I'm just finally starting to wake up. It was a long morning. <laughs> Once again, I'm glad I got my biological clock on schedule because I woke up at 741 for some odd reason my alarm didn't go off. I woke up at 741 I was like, uh all right. I wanted to ask you before I forgot. Earlier you were talking about that book yeah. uh, that you liked. Tiger's wife review will be up this week guys. I was just wondering if you have ever read this. This was my biological father's favorite book of all time and I haven't read it. Aztec? No, yeah. I haven't. It's pretty. It's pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he read lots of horror. He was a big King fan, big Barker fan. Um, loved all the splatterpunk stuff too, um, like the drive-in and things like that. But this was his favorite book of all time. Aztec, Gary Jennings. And I read. I started it. And I think it's one of these things that you've got to, 
the beginning of it was one of the worst things I'd ever read in my life. <laughs> At the time, it's been years, but um, I know I need to tackle it eventually. Because there is uh, six books in that series, Chad. Yeah, I have some of them, Good if God. not if not all of them. But I think that's the first one. Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent the first one. I'm just. But yeah, wow. he loves that big time. But he's turned me on to some stuff that I never would have picked up on my on my own, like um, like this book with the worst cover in the world. It's one of my favorite books of all time. Some kind of hero. I've heard okay. of it. Oh my gosh, man! And uh, I just who was it? Somebody that I know, an author, because I mentioned Aztec, and I mentioned this in Skullface Boy. And so they read, they read some kind of hero, um, which they turned into into a horrible movie starring Richard Pryor, and it's just a it's a really bad movie. Which would did they change the name of it? No, I don't. I do not remember. I thought I saw everything that Richard Pryor did. No, this is like a, um, and they tried to throw a little bit of comedy in it. It's just it's it's a bad bad movie, but. Um, Marco Kidder. This is amazing. Amazing book. And then huh. he turned he turned me on to this too. And I if you haven't read this, you have to read this. The Painted Bird by Jersey Kaczynski. That's actually on on one of my lists. I don't know what list it's on, but I've You you would really like this. Man, huh. it is one of the most brutal, if not the most brutal books I've ever read. About a kid who uh gets taken away from his parents during World War II and um, stumbles into all kinds of uh, people along the way. And it's freaking, uh, the crap that he goes through is is insane. And it's, cool. uh, yeah, Jersey ended up killing himself. I think he hung himself, but. Damn. Yeah, such a good book. Chad, how many stories did you write before you published or got published? Uh, I think four. And I had written four short stories, never wrote a thing for almost two decades. And then um, wrote a story and then got it published through a uh, kind of like love for the love thing. I think the first few stories I had published were through like uh, for the love, like, you know, like I did sell them. They just were published. And um, but the first four that I wrote most of them were not uh, very good. And I had only submitted one to, I think it was Fantasy and Science Fiction Magazine in the 90s. And I got rejected. And I just never sent. It wasn't until people started taking uh, submissions electronically that I really started to, I don't know if it was laziness or what. It's just, I don't want to send all this. I don't want to self, send self-addressed stamped envelopes all the time and, and stuff. So after I got to a conversation with somebody who had something published and I was like, so they're all taking stuff electronically now. It's like, yeah, I was like, I'm doing this. And I've, I've been doing it ever since. Man, the struggle was real back in the day. I had to buy writer's markets guides just to I, find yeah, people to I bought to. writer's markets freaking high back in like 95, something like that. And, you know, it was highlighting everything was choosing markets to send stuff to. And there was a lot, there was a lot of cool magazines you could submit to with, uh, you know, making some decent money. But um, the magazines that I have, have published now are more like books, like Mystery, uh, what is that, Mystery Weekly or, or it's more like a, it's like a magazine, but it's not like a magazine magazine. It's more like a, I don't know, almost like a coloring book, you know, where it's got the thick Yeah, I know what you're talking cover about. and then Mystery Robert Weekly. Tone. Mr. Weekly. Yeah. yeah, Robert Tone has one like that. And I can't remember the the periodical, whatever you want to call it, that he's got a story in. But I was really taken aback in a good way by the quality of it. I should bring it out here and show it off at some point. But uh, um, he's got a story in there. And the, just the production quality of the zine itself is, is fucking amazing. It has the, the thin... It's almost like a almost like creep show where it has like the thick yeah. paper. Nice. Then, yeah. It's like that. I'll bring it out and show it off. So I'll try and remember next time we stream, which is going to be Monday morning. I would think 
Um, but yeah, it's it's really nice. And I thought about uh, submitting to them, but I was like, nah, I got other shit I need to do. This I is uh, yeah, Mystery yeah, Weekly Magazine. Yeah, that's pre that's pretty much what this uh, the one that Rob has something in. Um, got a story in that one. It's got a really cool, like almost uh, <clears throat> death metal, like Cannibal Corpse cover to it. Really cool. A question to both of you. Do you have a favorite novel? Well, yeah. Uh, mine's easy. I don't know about Chad, but mine's It by Stephen King. Man, I, I, I don't know that I can... I don't know. I don't know that I can answer that. I I, I mean, I have like a top three or four or whatever, like Boy's Life and uh, The Green Mile. And uh, Painted Bird is up there. Um, I Am Legend is one of them by Richard Matheson. I'm sorry. I can't take that book seriously. The, the giant, the giant dick just, it kills me every time I even think about, no, not I Am Legend, Hell House. I'm sorry. I don't know why I get those two conflated, but, hmm. um, Hell House is got one of the goofiest fucking things I've ever read. And I'm sure it was terrifying back then when, you know, so many people were prudes, but the guy chasing everybody through this haunted house with this giant phallus, I just, I, I can't do it. It's kind of like uh, Bentley Little's Dominion. Uh, toward the end, there's a satyr, like God, like goat man thing. And he's got this massive dick that he rips the nuns that worship him in half with. And I just, I'm like, I can't, I can't take this shit seriously. This is definitely parody and satire, right? This cannot be serious. But anyways, it's kind of, <laughs> kind of like uh, the problem I have, uh, the only problem I have with American Gods by Neil Gaiman is there's a character in there that eats dudes with her vagina. Um, literally just gobbles them up. <laughs> and shit like that, I find hilarious. I don't find it a bit disturbing. I find it laughable. Have you seen the movie Teeth? Oh yeah, yeah. That that one bothered me a little bit more, especially like you know the the first time when like the, it falls out of her, that bothered me. But like the big, I mean, because that's still like you know somewhat in the realm of believability for me. Mm -hmm. But to consume someone through through your through that way, or to have a a member that big, like that's goofy to me. But something like a uh, vagina dentata or however you pronounce it, is it's unsettling. But I mean, shit like that actually happens. Like, not the control to be able to, but they found teeth in new news before, so. They're making a, uh, this will probably blow your mind, then. they're making a musical uh, a, on the movie Teeth. I'm not surprised. I am. But I am like, Why? I mean, hey, if, they, yeah. if somebody wants to put the effort in, whatever. But, I mean, there's Carrie the musical. There's Beetlejuice the musical. There's all different kinds of stuff I never thought would be a musical. Um, Evil Dead. Evil Dead, yeah. Um, so I, I'd watch it, but I'd especially like to see if they do the scene where it falls out. That'd be that'd be fucking hilarious. Like, she belts, like, a really high note, and it just plunk. <laughs> see, I can't take, I can't even take that seriously. But, I mean, that scene did bother the hell out of me. And I don't know why. You can't seriously take it seriously, but your favorite book is about a clown that turns into a spider. Yes. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not It's not a clown that turns into a spider. He gets stuck in the spider form because... I almost went full nerd on you. Anyways, but... Uh, it, it's, and, in, in, and in order to save the day, <clears throat> a bunch of 13-year-old kids have to have an orgy 11, in the sewer. 11. They are 11. It makes okay. it even worse. But yes, they are 11. And... That's that's like one page out of an eleven hundred page book, dude. It's a very unforgettable page. But yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, and I, everyone I talk to that isn't a weirdo skips it every time they get to it. Same here. It I read didn't it. Bother, it didn't times. bother me at all. I, I think. Uh, I think <clears throat> I've only read that scene twice. Um, in fact, the, the copy that I have, um, that I've read the most of, it's literally dog eared. That page is dog eared, so I can just skip right over it. Um, but, but, but in my defense, the clown isn't what bothers me. Like the clown isn't why I like it. The, the clown is just like a fucking avatar. Uh, same with the spider. It's just 
forms that he's been stuck in because they're so universally scary to people. Um, except, except for people like you who have no problem with clowns. Mm-hmm. But what get what what terrifies me is the way it uses the people's fears and like the scariest scene for me has no action in it whatsoever. It's literally Ben on the bridge. He's looking out over the frozen barrens, and Pennywise is there, but he's a fucking mummy, and it's just so out of place. And Ben, Ben, of course, is scared of the mummy, and it's just standing there with the fucking balloons, and that scene is so understated it gets underneath my skin it's kind of like there's a scene in a night film the same way where it's just one it's just a main character looking out onto this bridge and there's something on the bridge and it's not well defined it just had there's bits i got goosebumps just thinking about it but there's but again night film and it those are not the reasons why i love those books it's all about the characters and the the story and the mystery of the whole thing. Um, but no, the, cl- the cl- Pennywise doesn't scare me. None of the movie versions of the clown have really scared me. Uh, but it gets the mummy and the giant bird that Mike has to deal with. But both of those are scary to me for whatever reason, probably because they shouldn't be. And it's just the way he wrote them that that actually frightens me. But I don't read I don't read it to be frightened. I read it for the, the camaraderie and the nostalgia and that feeling of togetherness being outsiders and finding your people and all that um and then the generational trauma theme that that's throughout all all of that stuff i really yeah that that, that's that's the reason and also it's like the book opens with a king telling his uh, kids not to forget the magic and i think that's another reason why i like the book is because no matter how many times i read it there's still that sense of discovery um, it took me <clears throat> it took me four years to get through that. I, I don't I don't doubt it. Uh, this book is gratefully dedicated to my children. My mother and my wife taught me how to be a man. My children taught me how to be free. Kids, fiction is the truth inside the lie, and the truth of this fiction is simple enough. The magic exists. I just love that quote. And he spent a almost half a century living that life. They always trying something new, always going with the risk instead of the easy win. Um, even when he does a sequel to something, it's usually nothing that people expected or even wanted, like uh, like Doctor Sleep. Uh, people wanted more more to that book than what it was, just to find out that you know Danny's an alcoholic as an adult, and he's he, but he was able to beat it. And then you have this whole new character. People wanted to hyper focus on Danny and what happened to him, and that book just turned into something completely different. Did you see the movie? Oh yeah, I fucking love the movie. The okay, so you is, so you were able to appreciate the all the Kubrick stuff that they brought. Oh in. oh hell yeah, definitely. In fact, in my review, I said um, that the book fixes both the problems with Doctor Sleep, the book that I had. Because I only gave it three stars. Um, they were it, the main characters that never felt like they were in danger. Um, there was never an, a moment where I was like, I'm worried about you. Abro was so overpowered from the get go that I was like, whatever. And then Danny has control of his shit. So it, they're obviously going to win easily. And they did. Um, and then also I said in my review, and it also fixes the issues that I had with Kubrick's film. So he geniusly mashed them together and made this heartfelt horrifying story and stripped away all the clinical stuff all the the soulless stuff from the shining from kubrick's the shining and then fixed all of the overpowered nonsense that was in the book that i didn't like so like one of my favorite scenes in the in the movie is when uh abra meets rose the hat in like that dream world and d gloves her like she gets her hand stuck in a um, what is it? Safe deposit box in the dream world. And it gets, I, I love the nod to Gerald's game. And I also love the fact that I was more worried for Abra in the movie than I ever was in the book. And I'm not sure why, because they were pretty much, pretty much the same. Um, but I think I liked the characterization of Abra in the movie more than I liked the characterization in the, in the book. Um, and then, of course, there's the baseball boy scene, which is if you can get through that and feel good, 
you're probably a psychopath <laughs> because that scene is so fucking disturbing. It's so upsetting to watch this child beg for his life knowing he's not going to make it. And the the whole thing that that's the kind of shit that's scary to me is like that bit of dialogue where he says he's sobbing. He's like, are, are, are you are you going to hurt me? And she just leans in and goes, yes, like, fuck you, man. <laughs> that's 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 mm-hmm. horrid. That that's true villain villain stuff. Yeah, that it's true. That that's a, that's a good ass villain. And in my memory, I do not remember them saying that in the book. I've watched the movie numerous times, but I, if they did, King did not drive it home as well as they did in the movie. It's just that lean in and the breathy yes. I was like, oh, fuck, I'll oh, fuck off. Yeah, you're scary now. You weren't scary in the book. But uh, hmm. but, there, but there's also like there's just like there's there's a bunch of stuff I'm glad they fixed with the book also just to make my own heart feel better like tommy the ch word the asian slur the the slur for asians tommy the i'm not going to say the word yeah, but, okay, yeah, okay. um but they changed it in the movie of course because fucking why was he named that to begin probably because he was you know Rome, he, nomad and whatnot and that's how these people speak but at the same time having to read that i certainly didn't want to hear that over and over again <laughs> when when you know they were talking to each other um, but the true not for me was never really an uh, unique individuals. And even though they had unique names, they were never unique individuals, and therefore they were never scary to me. Um, in the book, in the movie, they character the the character development's fantastic. Flanagan did a terrific job building each and every single one of those characters, even to a point when the old man dies. I actually felt bad that this monster was fucking dying just because the way everyone was reacting mm-hmm. in the book. I never got any of those vibes, no, nothing whatsoever. I was, I was just like, okay, th- this happened. He died. They eat him. And then we move on. Um, but in the movie, I was on the edge of my seat. I was like, this is brilliant. That's it's shot perfectly everything. So yeah, it fixed every problem I had with Kubrick, with Kubrick's the shining and every problem I had with Dr. Sleep, the book, it beautifully melded them together a much better climactic ending than just well I think Rose falls out of a fucking watchtower or something I can't remember how how they beat her but um yeah, she's up, when it was like up in a, it, it was it was very lackluster and of course you read King you expect that kind of shit but Flanagan did a fantastic job going back to the overlook and I liked it I liked it more I liked the, the shining Kubrick's the shining more now because Dr. Sleep exists. Mm-hmm. Um, because now I'm not mad that the building, you know, the, the Overlook wasn't destroyed because we get to go back there yeah. and see him face his, see, let Danny face his demons. I, I love, I love every minute of that movie. Um, yeah. it's, it, was a, it's, it was impressive. I, I was, I mean, I signed up for the Kubrick stuff because when I saw the trailer, um, that was my, that, that was all my favorite parts. When Danny went back to the hotel and stuff, I was just giddy, man, revisiting all this, <laughs> I bet. revisiting, the, you know, the carpet, the bathroom, all this stuff. I was just like, man, yes. And I thought it was genius to, to, to do that film and not and, and ignore like the huge stamp that Kubrick left yeah. behind with his uh, rendition or whatever of The Shining would be stupid. So the fact that he was able to <clears throat> grab both camps and uh, make them both happy mm-hmm. was uh, the way to do it. And Flanagan, <clears throat> I think we talked recently how much I hate Mick Garris's uh, yeah. <laughs> films. I'm I'm, I'm right there with you, man. I don't know why King. I, I guess because they're friends. I don't know, but I don't get it. A good movie. Garris seems like a great guy that loves oh, horror, yeah. but um, I, I don't I don't get it. And but to Flanagan, like when I heard that somebody was making a, a film of uh gerald's game i was like yeah good luck you know and he and, fucking killed it oh my gosh he man. fucking killed it i was yeah i was yeah because if there was one if there was one stephen king book that i would be like you can't make an entertaining movie of this it would probably be gerald's game yeah uh, mike because... Flanagan kicked open the door was like haha watch me one of my favorite interviews with him uh is before dr sleep uh was even like fully in production he'd written the script it was going to be a movie but it wasn't fully in production and the poor 
the poor journalist that asked him this question, it it would I, I didn't I didn't fit I didn't feel bad for them, but it was it was awkward. It's like a uh, one of those awkward situations that you kind of enjoy when uh, the the lady asked him, "Did you feel any nerves or worried about how you were going to blend these two together, you know, and have them both in the Kubrick world of The Shining and Doctor Sleep the book?" And Mike Flanagan looked her right in the face and just said, "No, not at all." And that was it. That was the end of that question. And she's over there. She's like, "Oh." Okay, moving on. <laughs> was like, and, and obviously he had it all on lock the entire time. He wasn't a bit worried about it because he figured out how to, which is the genius part of that movie, how to blend both and make both camps happy. Um, and I, but that is, it's one of my fun, one of my favorite interviews with him because he said, no, not at all. <laughs> and she was she was not prepared for that. She was prepared for him going. Of course, there's some kind of you know, the, you got the pulp culture stuff, and all. she was expecting some kind of deep answer. And you could tell, and <laughs> he was just like, no, not at all. Like, good he's, for you, Mike. Good for he's you. He's doing Poe now. Yeah, follow the House of Usher. Uh, <sighs> anywho, I guess we got to get back to work. Distraction. Yeah, it's a terrible, terrible, terrible uh, work ethic we have. We've been doing good. I know. I'm, I'm just kidding. Anyway, oh, oh, before we get back to this, did you read? Uh, did you read what I wrote for the setup for him stealing the coke? Um. Oh no 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 no! I I okay. haven't got there. I just now was trying to. Um, I had taken some more of the because I realized that I. I Without really knowing it, I had essentially rewrote the whole. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> with, <laughs> I didn't know how you were going to blend it or not. So I picked some of the, uh, some of that, and I and I dropped in there things like "I'm going to jail," um, some other stuff like that. Uh, I, I changed a couple things and, and pulled some of your stuff in there. Okay. And so I was just uh, no, I was tackling that first because I felt kind of bad that I had just gone in there and ignored ignored everything essentially. Whatever. If it works better, it works better. <clears throat> I also had another What's idea. Um, What's it? Let's let's say on the way. I want to run the, this past you before we actually get to the scene. On the way to the carnival. Like he's already decided that he's kind of running a running away is what I'm figuring we're gonna do, mm-hmm. and he just ends up coming across Shenna back behind the barn outside of this carnival or whatever you're gonna do. Um, what if along the way he comes across like he walks by the person that because it, basically what I've had is Travis went to go score a bag on good faith from a dealer. The dealer said the dealer was high and himself and was like hey just grab a whatever man just grab a bag out of the shed so travis goes out there to the shed this is a story that he tells his family anyways he goes out to the shed he finds a brick so he took the brick instead and then he tells his family he was too high to notice and when he does he won't even remember i was there kind of thing is what i was going for um i probably didn't say that but that's what i was going for um and then i was thinking on the way to running away or whatever he just happens to pass the guy's name's cooter the drug dealer that i had travis mm-hmm. steal from um on the way go by you, there. Must, you must be a dig a big dukes of hazard fan because you also mentioned cletus well yeah i mean it's it's kind of like the stereotypical bullshit around here like yeah. it, everyone knows a cletus a bubba a cooter everyone knows those mm-hmm. people in real life here like you yeah. know you, you just you, hey cooter what's up or even if their name's not Cooter, you know, they call each other Bubba, you know, what is Cletus, that, that kind of shit. Boobs. Um, uh, all, all those names, man. Um, but yeah, so I just threw Cooter in there. I was thinking as as Shane is leaving, he could walk by and see a crime scene out in front of Cooter's place. Um, maybe Travis, you know, killed the dude. And now Cooter's family is looking for... Um, is looking for whoever killed. So they, they, they don't know automatically who stole the stuff. So that, that side be muddled that way, but I don't know if that works as far as, um, 
But it, it, like the first phone call when he gets there and he talks to uh, Cassidy, he could Cassidy could tell him. Well, he could tell Cassidy. He's like, I think Uncle Travis killed Cooter um, mm-hmm. because you know there was cops out there. They were rolling the body out, and Cooter lives alone. Whatever. And then, um, then Cassidy would be able. To, That's good. Then right. That means nobody's coming after us. And you could have, and then by the next week, you have this feeling like he's left this all behind. Um, like everything's fine at home. He doesn't have to worry about it. But then he gets the, he gets the call. Oh, well, he calls Cassidy at whatever payphone we designate. And Cassidy's like, I think someone's found out, you know, Uncle Trav has been acting weird, so on and so forth. I think someone's coming after them and they've been talking about going to find you, mm-hmm. so on and so forth, um, and build that up, build that tension. Oh. Um, I don't know if you think that too on the nose to have him walk by the crime scene, yeah. but it would also tell us the truth about what happened. You know, instead of him just you know walking off with Cooter's drugs, he literally killed the dude, yeah. and you know started some kind of you know turf war, not turf war, but you get what I'm saying. My only problem with that is, will the reader think that our uh, Shane is just an idiot because not only is he. Uh, because he's he's running away, but he's also involving himself even more, and this time with like murder by taking this cocaine. Where you know, yeah, like, but he wouldn't know until he's already stolen. Like he he wouldn't he wouldn't real, realize, and he, now he can't go back home because oh. he has because because he has this stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I misunderstood. Okay, so he he's already has the stuff, and and then he finds out later. Oh, this goes far deeper than I thought. Right, exactly, and that could build build the tension. Is what I'm thinking, anyways. Once again, not married to anything. I'm just throwing that out there, mm-hmm. just to give an idea that you know, even fur- further that that Travis has not only stolen from this guy, but he's also lied to his family about how deep they are into it. Mm-hmm. You know how how the how scary the situation actually is. Because Travis is of, is of course an idiot, but um. But anyways, I, th- that's pretty much, yeah. I mean, that's okay. where I was going to go with it. And that probably won't be, what, to chapter three until we, we even tackle that. Uh, I'm going down to the notes. Okay. Yeah, Protag doesn't want to sit around here about all his bright future with the cocaine. So he hits the local carnival. Yeah, I mean, he can meet Sh- Shinna then and then end up him going back and deciding he's gonna yeah and he's taking the cocaine and joining the carnival and then that second trip where he decides he's going to be joining is when he goes by cooter's house and notices cops out there maybe he passed by it the first time and it's like that's cooter's house no activity and he passes by the next day when he finally decides to leave and there's a bunch of cops out there and they're rolling cooter out on a or rolling somebody out whatever i don't know something like that I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Uncle DeWitt in the characters list. Okay. We got right. I'm going to add your screen back to that if you want to. Okay. I don't know if you want to share what you're writing or not. Yeah. I'm actually going to run and use the restroom. I'll be right back. Um, okay. Southern sounding names. Yeah, we're going We're going for Hicklet with this one, definitely.
sorry about that. I had to try and pry my 11 year old out of bed. Oh. That boy love him bed. Love him bed. Let's go see what you're doing. What you done did did. Still working on fusing two. I've separated them now. I'm doing a dumpster scene where he's going to. Uh, gotcha. It's kind of like a plan B because he thinks that um, he thinks Cassidy didn't get everything he needed. He right. knows he didn't get the peanut butter, but I wanted to him to find out later that he actually did get the peanut butter and make some reference. You know, maybe his maybe he's more of a ninja than I thought. Whatever, but <clears throat> gotcha. Like he's he's did a better job than he thought he did but he's kind of grabbing the pizza as a plan b and he's trying to get it done as, as soon as he can to hopefully meet him up at the same time so cassie doesn't get in trouble for coming back home with only yeah i got part, you. part of his his list i'm struggling today man i really am struggling right today i understand i don't, I don't know why sometimes it'd be like that I think it's uh I keep my, my boys home today. <clears throat> so I was distracted because they were out there talking. Do, are you one of these people who capitalize dumpster because it's a brand name? No, I I've, I've, don't think I've ever done that. No, yeah, me <laughs> I don't think I've ever had an editor change it either. And I use dumpsters a lot. So
wait a second. Before I go any farther, yeah, you're you're, ha you're having him grab a pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. Th this is okay. Gotcha. Okay. I'm changing my stuff in the next part because I doubt. I don't know. You may not like it. I may be double working myself, but that's that's all right. Uh, go ahead. Stand. My thing is, <clears throat> like he took a short, he took a shortcut. He grabbed this, he flipped the lid of this thing, grabbed a pizza, saw there was another one underneath it, grabbed that, took off running. So, if Cassidy gets home before he does, it's, it's, it's only a minute. Yeah, I got you. So if he's if he's because I just noticed you said sucking broth from ramen, uh, ramen cup. I'm trying to make it work with what you got up there. And if I'm if none of it stays and I'm fine with that. So you're talking about cup of ramen or, or whatever. If you if from, we could do uh, sucking ramen broth. Well, my, my point ramen, is he, broth, he, there's no way that would have been cooked is what yeah, I'm saying. I got you. But uh, well, it only takes two <clears throat> minutes. I mean, you could literally it, at least the ramen comes. I'm aware of <laughs> only take two minutes in the microwave on high. Uh, from a bowl, ramen broth. From a bowl. I'll I'll have my dude slow down then because uh, and and get get distracted with something. Well, if it, I mean, if, I, if I know it's it's only two minutes, but that's if the but that well, also ramen cups are not going to fit in a not a bunch of them aren't going to fit in his like the pre-packaged Marochan styrofoam cups. Yeah, he, yeah, he could only fit like one or two in his jacket. Yeah, I know. Um, so. I'm saying, like, the only way the ramens would be done, in, even in a bowl, is if he sprinted home. Because uh, I got cat, so we'll have to change something. Because I got Shane, you know, running as fast as he can because he was trying to beat Cassidy home. Gotcha. So I mean, it, it could be something as, uh, yeah, he's trying to beat Cassidy home. I was just thinking it could be something where the pizza parlor is like the opposite direction, like another block or something, but he's still running. I don't know. I mean, I'm not even attached to this whole thing with him. He could just be sitting on the front steps. Um, when I get back, Cassidy is sat on the front steps. He has the biggest shit hitting grin on his face as he. That's what I was saying because I saw yeah. that you had the. I saw that you had the Cheeto dust or whatever. Yeah. Or the, <clears throat> and I thought we would just go with that. Like he got more than he thought that he got. You know, he got the ramen, he got peanut butter, he got chips. We could, a hundred percent, we could. Honestly, so, yeah, honestly. everybody's got the food inside, but he's sitting on the steps covered in, you know, Cheeto Sorry. dust. Yeah. And then. So he has two boxes of pizza. I could probably just read. Yeah, they're in those. Um, uh, I got them in those uh, like bags, but with the cardboard backing. Gotcha. So that they're greased. Um, is, is soaking through the. Yeah, I got you. I'm I'm reading it. I don't usually use the term slow your roll, but uh, <laughs> since we're talking about um, Cassidy being a snowball. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, the real one's going to get that. <laughs> That's, That's really good. <laughs> All right. So it's two pizza boxes. Um
<clears throat> I am having to. I am having to regain an old habit. I used to write. I used to format like this uh, before Bay's End with the the spaces between paragraphs, mm -hmm. and I stopped doing it um, because it annoyed one of my editors. And now I'm having to break the habit again in reverse, so I could remember to put the spaces. It's just just an aside I wanted to throw in there. I thought it was funny. Well, hang on, we can. Um... Oh no, we're fine. We're fine. Don't don't mess with it because I'm I'm back. I'm no, back. I'm, you know I'm gonna for because we, we can format this, which is what I've been doing lately, and I forgot to. Fine. I amazing. usually I usually write it. Um, it it doesn't. What, let me get this out. It doesn't bother me one way or another, but I usually for I usually format it the way I want it to look in the book. Uh, by the end, but yeah, um, this this doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I'm getting the hang of it again. So, the right. double the double enter after every line. Um, but that's up to you. If you want to go back, I'm I'm a switch hitter. I can do either. It's just I find it funny that you know I thought the I thought the story was funny. Um, I I went through hell trying to break that habit, and now I'm having to redo it again. Um, and it's coming back, but yeah, I'm just not used to it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, Jacob Trembley was was the baseball boy. That shit was. Whew. <clears throat> uh, I just wrote something. I think I'm gonna take out. It happens. It happens. It's just a little perverted. And I don't. I was trying to give this guy a backstory, and I thought we'll make it creepy. And I don't know. You went full Lorne. You never go full Lorne. Guy that owns the car wash, Mr. Franklin, gives Cassidy a quarter every time he sees him. Cassidy yeah. loves the guy. Thinks he's got a good heart. Has a generous soul. But I'm not so sure. <clears throat> Cassidy do doesn't see Mr. Franklin's eyes wander where they shouldn't. When he has his back turned, doesn't notice the subtlety of wandering fingers across his shoulder when he's bringing him in for a side hug during one of his little pep talks about what a good kid he is. Hey, I don't that that's subtly 
that's subtle. That's far more subtle than I thought you were talking about since you said you were going to remove it. I do <laughs> not mind that. That is, I, I, I don't hate that. But uh, there, there is the question, do we need it? Exactly. Um, so I mean, I like adding those kind of things, but this particular one, <clears throat> probably don't need it. True, true. But at the same time, this is the kind of thing that, you know, we're going to need to kind of space out the book. So to, it, it also, and one of the main reasons I, I think maybe, maybe I should take it out is because <clears throat> I don't want the reader to ever <clears throat> be like, why, important. why would you leave Cassidy back with all this? You know, Mr. Franklin, the, you know, yeah. It's it's also it's also superfluous detail since we're never going to deal with Mr. Franklin again. So on that note, yeah. I say go ahead and get rid of it. But I do like it, so it might end up getting cut anyways um, by an editor. It might be something where they point out um, just basically what I said. If we're not if we're never coming back to Mr. Franklin, why do we need this? Yeah, kind of deal. Yeah, I'm gonna kill it. Well, that was depressing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I liked it. But anyways, I fully agree. I fully agree. It's another one of those things, killing darling. Killing darlings ain't even mine. I'm over here mourning the loss of them. <laughs> anyways. I, I think my section is now caught up to your section where we're both on the same page. Okay. So we blended in the outline, we blended chapter one and chapter two together. So in chapter two, we can have him getting fed up and leaving. And then chapter three would open up with him on the way. Okay. on the way to meet uh, Shenna for the first time is what I'm saying. We're going to end that with him going home. Deciding to take the Coke in chapter four. Because if these are four to 5,000 word long chapters, then, I mean, that gets us to 20, well, close to 20,000 words for the opening before he even gets, before he even joins the carnival. Okay.
Hey, Haley. Sorry, just seeing you. We've been working. <coughs> Damn it. I'm choked to death on my coffee before <coughs> before the day's over. Um
did we lose Chad or did he? I'm here, dude. I'm okay, just fine. eating. I'm eating. That's fine. That's why I was just wondering if I lost you. No, I'm like just setting the camera, camera, camera off. So I'm eating well while I can continue. How dare you eat and work at the same time? I, right? I so like, rude. I feel like you don't even respect me. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. I know you're gonna cut like three quarters of this, but it's there for you to do what you want with it. Um, I was talking to Shella about this, and uh, she goes, "So how are, how's it going with uh, with Chad? Is he is he keeping much of your stuff?" She's, well, we've been together twenty two years, um, mm -hmm. and so she knows I've been through all this before. And the last time I did this was literally like less than six months ago. Uh -huh. where I wrote something for someone and he completely, he didn't use a single word of what I wrote and completely rewrote it from the ground up. But I mean, I already got paid for it. And the whole, the whole point was, is to have something that he could build off of. Um, wow. And so I, I told her it's, it's no different than working with Josh. And she said, Oh, well, oh, okay. Well, that's pretty easy. And it's like, yeah. And you know, it's not like he's not using anything uh, because Josh didn't use a fucking thing and I was perfectly fine with that. But mm -hmm. I have always been, and I, I told her this, I've always been whatever serves the project. I don't give a shit about the order of the words. I don't give a shit about, you know, any of this, as, as long as we have a complete, you know, cogent piece by the end, I'm perfectly fine with what happens. <clears throat> I don't know if I just come off as someone who would get upset about that or, you know, most people are the opposite. Um, so I, I, I just don't know. I am. Uh, that's good because I'm not that kind. I, I am a, I am a control freak. Mm -hmm. I've noticed. I'm perfectly um, fine with that. And that's why I can't always write with just, anyone tim meyer is one of the most laid-back people that you'll ever meet yeah um, good dude. uh great dude love him and uh john bowden of course is too the difference between the two john bowden uh is it's uh i mean our, our he writes more po much more poetically than i do i save that and use it more the things that he does use it, use it more sparingly than he does He's not, a lot of his stuff isn't like a, my stuff is like a fast read. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. You know, I think my stuff is like, if you're not even into reading, um, I think my stuff is more like for the person who, yeah, maybe doesn't enjoy reading that much because I keep, try to keep it really simple where someone like uh, uh, Black and Teeth, which I know you loved incredible prose there's no doubt about it but that's that's a uh you know i would never be able to write that kind of prose but i would never want to either but it, that kind of book is not uh, is an example of something that you can't just speed through you mm -hmm. know because there's a lot of uh depth into you know what's being written there and bowden is like that but he uh not 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 like that but his stuff, yeah, is is it's hard to describe. I learned a lot from just from reading him, and and um, I'm able to mock him, and him, he's able to mock me. And uh, it's our original prose is <clears throat> uh, so close together anyway that it's it, it's kind of a different different process. Yeah. But yeah, that's I'm <laughs> I'm glad because I mean I don't have to be a control freak, but. I guess I'm more comfortable being that way. I don't know, man. It's uh, it's funny. I was laughing while you were telling the Bowden's, the Bowden story. Um, and the only reason I was laughing, I had nothing to do with what you were saying, is I keep picking up and putting down out behind the barn, not because it's bad, mm -hmm. but because when I want a Chad Lutzky book, I want a Chad Lutzky book. Mm -hmm. And I keep opening up out behind the barn, and I see these, you know, the like the first paragraphs, a decent length, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and it's just like, this ain't Chad Lutsky. This isn't what I signed up for. This is, this is like, this is denser than anything else he's done. Um, so I find that funny, but I'll, I'll read it eventually. Um, I want to read something by Bowden before reading that one. 
Um, I'm also starting Broad Street Bastard today. I know I told you I was going to start it ages ago, but I got into the Tiger's Wipe and it was going so well, I didn't want to stop. Um, I was going to read them back to back, but I was like, no, this one really requires my attention and I want to give, you know, Chad his due attention. Um, so I'll be starting that today, but I'm excited for it because I'm in the mood for something. After reading this dense motherfucker, <laughs> I'm excited to open up a Chad Lutsky book and get the Lutsky I, I, I desire, you know, I, I the, that kind of thing and i still got to go back and read i know they're all out of order and i know they're standalones or whatnot i got to go back and do same deep water um i got to do that one because i know that's that's the first but it's also the last so far it's, it's like the first it's, written but it's the last in the series right yeah. exactly so i'm also worried about Jax. so i it's another reason why uh you know don't, don't tell me anything whether he survives or not but i'm also worried about Jax. i like Jax, so i will uh I will find out, but yeah, I don't trust you as far as I can throw you, and I know you're light <laughs> still. <clears throat> but the fact that the thing is, it's almost like a like a spoiler without being a spoiler. Is like that you're that you and don't tell. Once again, don't even hint that I'm right. But it feels like there's a reason why you decided to go backward instead of forward. So that's another reason why I'm just like I'll leave that one for a while until. Are you planning another one? Yeah, and I'm pretty far into it. It's going to be much longer than all of them. Okay, well, then I'll wait for that one before. And once you tell me it's done, I will go back and read uh, Deep Water. Is it another, it's another prequel, right? You're just writing these completely. They're all first. backwards, yeah. They're all yeah, backwards. Okay, cool. I, I'm, I, I dig the fuck out of that. That's almost like the, the film Memento. Um, I really dig shit like that. Uh, or uh, here, here's one for you. I'm thinking, about, I'm thinking of Ending Things mm -hmm. by uh, Ian... I never remember the dude's name. Reed. Anyways, huh? Reed. Reed? In, in Reed. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking of ending things, can't, not word for word backward, but you can read the book backward and have an entirely new experience. You can read the last chapter, second to last chapter, third to last chapter backward, because um, the whole book is in a is in a palindrome, of course. But you can read them backward and get a completely different story, but still a full story which I thought was, I don't even know if that was intended, but I was picking things up along the way and I tried to, I did the audiobook, and then I went back and did the audiobook again. I went to the very last chapter, did the one before that all the way till I got to the first chapter again. And I got a completely different story and I've never tried that. And I've never even thought about trying that with any books that I've read. Um, but that one fits so perfectly. Um, the way it I wonder, what, I wonder what happens if you, I wonder what happens if you read it while listening to Pink Floyd and watching Wizard of Oz. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Who knows? God damn it, man. Anyways, I was going to say something when you were talking about you, you write like a screenwriter is, is what I've always noticed. Uh, there's far more detail, um, but your stuff is basically just the pertinent details of where we're at, what's going on, and then your dialogue starts and it's a race to the fucking finish. It's all, it's the same way every single time. As soon as people start talking, I'm hooked. And that's pretty much all a script is. It's mostly dialogue. You have your pertinent details and mm -hmm. you know, you move on. <clears throat> so hundred percent, I know you'd make a killer screenwriter because you're already doing that. And they're all about movie length. Anyways, I think I can read most of your books in about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, so it literally feels like I'm, I've watched a movie. Um, so I'll probably be done now. It's too late in the day by the time we're done here to start it. But um, I might be done. I'm, I don't even know how long it is. I might be done with it today. It all depends. Um, it's, uh, it's it's not very long. I can't remember. Maybe lower 20,000, something like that. I'll, I'm going to burn right through that shit. I can edit my own 20,000 K novellas in a day. So, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to burn right through that. Definitely. I would love to write more screenplays. I've only written the one for Wormwood, and uh, that got, um, you know, it was it went through many revisions because we worked with, you know, Tim and I wrote it, but we worked with the, we had to answer to Mallerman and, and uh, uh, his other half of uh, Spin, of, Spin of Black Yarn um, production team, and then the director, and there was some stuff that uh, I'm still kind of upset about, uh, about that I'm almost convinced that if we would have left these in, maybe we would have found, we maybe we'd be further along right now. Uh, 
but uh, um well you don't know this about me i've never told you this but i as soon as i'm done with a novel and i know it's going to be published i start working on the screen screen play nice i start doing that so if you want to um i'm going to be working with derek from chat uh after we get done uh with the book i'm going to be working with derek because he's never written anything um mm -hmm. and it's going to be interesting to work with someone who has no writing experience whatsoever Mm -hmm. I've only done it one other time, but even then they had tried writing stuff and dude hasn't tried anything from what I understand. Um, so I was wondering if when I'm done with that, while we're shopping around, you know, in the, in the background, while we're shopping this around uh, and I'm done with Derek's thing. Mm -hmm. If you want to just go ahead and jump in and start doing the, uh, the, the, the screenplay. Do you have final draft? Yeah, I got final oh, draft. So oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there ain't no way in hell I'm working in Word with a fucking script. Ain't no fucking way, man. It's it, that's that shit's not happening. Um, yeah. And I've had print. It, here's a here's a funny story. I can't mention the author, but remind me if you can to mention the author after we're done. Okay. Uh, after we're done live. Uh, so what? Ha we're already two hours into this, anyways. Um, so there's this author, pretty well known in the horror community. Uh, I have absolutely nothing against this one. Okay, this isn't mm -hmm. a bad story, but uh, he come to find out he was working with a director buddy of mine and they were trying to they they were trying to get him to write because their whole build for their production company that they're that they're working on starting is we let the author adapt it for a couple reasons. But the main reason the reason they're not telling everybody is because they're tired of people complaining about the adaptations, not following the books. Mm -hmm. um, and the things that they have to change. So they're signing the authors to write the screenplays of their own books so that we can, he could literally point to them and go, he fucked up his own thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that kind of thing, which I find is funny. But I also I also like that he's given so much control to the actual author. So they said, all right, you need to write this. It needs to be this long, so on and so forth. You need to write an adaptation of this book. And the book itself is a novella so it's very short the script that this author turned in was a written in word and not formatted whatsoever b and they even sent him a copy of final draft that's it that's how i got my copy of final draft they sent it to me so i could do life after day but uh he sent back a manuscript for the screenplay that was twice as long as the book as the first thing and it was formatted in in word well it wasn't formatted at all it was just in word like with bullet points like what happens and whatnot and it, it's funny because the the author got in there and it was like i found so many ways to expand it having no clue having no frame of reference for a script mm -hmm. um and they're like we, we we can't we can't do this like it, and then they he calls me up uh the director calls me up and he's like can you do something with this and i'm like Fuck no, <laughs> because it's like it, normally people worry about what they have to cut out of. And it, this author used this to rewrite his own story and make it better yeah. and make it longer when that is the exact opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. With Has he never read a screenplay before? I guess not. I don't know the details with this. Mm -hmm. I, I barely know the author, but I found it funny that that happened, that when he turned it in, uh, like the book is only like 115 pages long, but he turned in a 220 page script. Um, and it wasn't formatted correctly, so it's it would be even longer if they formatted it correctly. It would be even longer than those 220 pages because once you put that into final draft with all the spacing and formatting and everything, it would make it a 300-page script easily. And I thought it was – I kept asking the dude. I was like, and you didn't tell him it was like a TV show or something? He's like, no, he just has no experience. Um, and so now we're having to whittle down this into that. Uh, and there's a pretty big name dude that's going to be direct. He was the, the, the person I'm talking about is just going to be producing it. There's a pretty big name dude who's going to be making the movie adaptation. And this guy has been working on this script for two years, trying to get it right. Um, and it's just now starting to, and just one script. He's been trying to take things away and argue with the author about, you know, what can't be in there and how they're going to make this cohesive. Uh, now that he's added so much, he's kind of sticking to his guns. He's like, it's mm -hmm. a better, better like this, even though they've told him, why don't you just write an expanded version of your novella, turn it yeah. into a novel, and then we can do the movie based on that. And he's like, no, 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 no. This is how the movie should be. I'm like, oh, my God, dude. I, 
this business. Is, <clears throat> no, if, you, business. if you've got a 200 page script, uh, the only person that's going to get that movie made is like Tarantino. They're not going to yeah. look at, they're not going to yeah. look at, that's the, that's, that was hard. <clears throat> the hardest part for me is trying to, which is ironic considering my stuff is a short, keeping under, you know, 112 pages or whatever. Yeah. The script, because um, it's a different kind of, if you can, um, I wish I would, it's like I said, it's, it's the only script I've written and I wish I would have, started another one right away just kept doing it because it's not something i can hop into right now i would i would need to go back to my screenwriter's bible and 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 uh kind of check up on you know what what, what how do i start this but what's this thing called that i gotta do because i forget that kind of stuff dude you're blowing my mind because i swear to god it'd be so easy to just but turn writing the script have. itself is freaking just e is easy yeah. and i feel like oh I you're talking about like int or ext uh yeah just all that yeah all of those and all that stuff the script speak the, yeah yeah all that stuff okay i get what you're saying that that makes more sense as i'm sitting here going it would be super fucking easy like just take your narrative and put it in the in the block text no. and then put your dialogue in <laughs> okay all the, I, all I, the little I, things like okay i need to have this person's name in all caps just the first time and you just all the little rules that you have to you know that you're expected to follow if but you, the if writing you, of the script itself um for me anyway way easier than writing prose and have you ever I, read storm of the century real quick yeah yeah he's one of the worst screenwriters stephen king's one of the worst screenwriters of all time is his shit reads like a novel for the most part it's just yeah. formatted weirdly um and what i'm getting at with that is most people don't care like they have their own way they're going to do it anyways mm -hmm. like i should i should send you uh i got some oscar uh, some Academy Award scripts sitting around here. Um, I should send you the one for uh, uh, Spike Lee's. Uh, what's the one in Vietnam? Um, I can't remember the name of the movie now. Anyways, um, but uh, dude, the the script, the way he writes his scripts, and I guess you know he can do that because he's Spike Lee. Same with Quentin Tarantino. But uh, they don't follow any of the fucking rules. Like not not a lick. Like the people mm -hmm. they're working with know their style, so they just go with it. Um, but I've written so many scripts just based on how exactly you're supposed to format it, mm -hmm. and they always end up getting changed to the director's own style because they're just going to rewrite it from the ground up, anyways, because they're going to do a shot uh, script. You have the shooting script, and you have the the script that pretty much gets picked up, and. <clears throat> I've learned not to worry about stuff like that because that shit's going to change anyways because I'm not the one who's going to be doing the shooting script. So if, if that helps any, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, That's crazy, Haley. I'm just throwing this out here because I agree. I keep hyper-focusing on your hat. Like I'm not even like looking at your eyes. Um, I've been traumatized. Toxie, I love you. I love those fucking movies, man. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says about trauma. I love those fucking movies. Uh, what's the one about the chicken? Chickenstein? Not Chickenstein. Poultry uh, Geist. Poultry Geist. That's it. I love that fucking movie. It is just unnecessarily offensive as fuck. And I love every minute of it. I used to have a magazine back 20, 25 years ago. And the, uh, I interviewed Lloyd Kaufman mm -hmm. while he was on his way to the Playboy Mansion to film, uh, I think it was Citizen Toxie. Yeah. Uh, such a cool guy. We we uh, um, we talked for maybe an hour and a half, and we were going to continue the uh, conversation later. But he had to, yeah, he had to go to. But such a cool guy, man. And he sent me some stuff uh, at the time, like promo stuff and just things for for the magazine. And and uh, I bought a trauma beanie, and <laughs> he sent me some like promo stills of like. Toxic Avengers standing there with like these chicks with uh, in bikinis and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Lloyd Kaufman's amazing. Um, I love I love the fact that he will just like throw twenty five thousand dollars at someone and just like do whatever you want. Yeah. Um, make whatever movie you want, and that's the movie we're gonna show, no matter how bad it is, no matter how good it is. Um, because he's all about saturation. He doesn't give a fuck about the the product individually. He has his favorite characters and whatnot, but mm -hmm. um, and and of course movies he likes more than others. But he just he's like when people are sitting around 
worrying about how they're going to fund something, that's when creativity and imagination dies. You know, they you need to get this stuff moving. And, you know, so I just give them twenty five thousand dollars and say, go make me a movie. And that movie will 100 percent make one hundred thousand dollars. I'll get my money back, you know, whatever. And I, I don't I don't give a shit. He's. He's one of the loosest producers on the face of the planet, no matter where you go, as far as complete freedom. Um, he's just going to he's going to give you that money. And if you run out of money, you run out of money. It's almost like a parent, you know, t- giving a, a child 25 bucks and be like, all right, you can go to the store. You got to make sure you uh, arrange for tax and all that stuff, because I'm not giving you anything more than twenty five dollars. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that's how they make it work. They, and on top of that, he's made so many movies um, that he has this wealth of props and all that other stuff that they can use wardrobes and all that stuff. So you, you get a lot of stuff for free, you know, just working with his company. Um, I, yeah, I, lo- I love him to death. And I'm glad that James Gunn came from that because I think it's kept him humble even to this, to this day, he's getting a little full of himself now that he's head of DC, uh, well, co co-head of DC, uh, movie, uh, side, mm-hmm. but, uh, for the most part, he's still pretty down to earth. Um, and yeah, that's because he came from, you know, trauma. Uh, that that's where all of his, uh, uh, history is. How's the writing going? We we've actually gotten a lot done for as much as we've been talking. So I've added some more. Let's see what our word count is. I'm big on word count and I obsess over it. That's fine. Oh, that's Frankenstein back there. Oh, Uniboob statue you got back on your behind you next to the dog mask. I What's that? My, I was just talking about the Uniboob <laughs> behind you, the statue. Um, yeah. I didn't realize it was Frankenstein's uh, monster's mask on it. Yeah, it's got Whatever. a uh, well, the it, it's got two boobs, but uh, there's a the mannequin is a painting that I, I did a painting on the mannequin and that, that is a moon uh, gotcha. on one of the breasts. I need to repaint it. It looks flat. Does it? Yeah. I don't like, I don't see the shape of the boob at all. I just see like almost like someone cut it off. Huh. Chad is, Chad is going to grab it so I can see the boob, I guess. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I see it. All right. See it now? Yeah, I see it. I got to be able to see both boobs, Chad. I have to be able to see both boobs. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I admire you both for being able to write on the spot like that. I just go black and be like, Herm. It's it definitely takes practice, and I'm sure there's been several times already. We just we just didn't know it that Chad has been like, Herm, that he has been <clears throat> staring off into his muse's aura. Did I have I ever shown you my what I did to my ceiling fan? No. Uh-uh. Uh, when we moved into this house, um, the ceiling fan was a children's ceiling fan with primary colors. Like one blade was yellow, blue, green, whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I did. Let's see if I can. Oops. Oh wow! Okay, that's fucking rad. And it even has the room key as the pull mother. Yeah. <laughs> That is, that's sick. I love that. Uh, I was awake till like 3 a.m. working on cleaning up the Coke mach- the King Coke machine. I'll start working on another drink option tomorrow. Yeah, you're fine, Haley. Take your time, hon. Take your time. I don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not pressuring you whatsoever. It's just going to be cool to see uh, when it's done. Yeah, that, yeah, that, uh, I agree that that fan is super cool. And I'm not even like a, Kubrick shining fan. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> but <Ba-dum-ts. laughs> sorry. <laughs> but I'm a fan of the fan. That's for sure. Anyways. I know you got lunch you gotta eat at some point. Um yeah, I'm good. I've been I've been dipping into it while I'm while I'm writing. All right. Oh yeah, that's right. You had your uh, see, that's how bad my my short term memory is. I'll remember you said that four days from now, but I, I won't remember. I'll probably, yeah, I'm a fan of the fan. Yes. I'm a huge Kubrick fan fan. <laughs> so fucking stupid. 
The English language, bro. The English language. All right. Well, if you want to continue on, I need to take a break. Um, okay. My butt's going me, me, me. And we're, we're off tomorrow, so we can go longer today. I also got some videos to shoot for this week. But anyways, I'm going to go take a break. I'll be back in a bit. And uh, one of these days, I'll buy Final Draft. You only have to buy it once, unlike fucking Word. So uh, Word, you have to pay a monthly subscription fee to. Freaking Final Draft that. hasn't done that yet. Anyways, I'll talk to you all when I get back. Hey! Be quiet.
Okay, I'm back. And Chad is black. Lord Jesus. <clears throat> Ooh. I have an idea. I'm just going to go ahead and write it and see what you think. Once again, not married. I had to spell nozzle there for a second. It went completely blank. I was like, N O S E L, N O S S E L. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you. 
Oh, there it goes again. There we go. Dude, what's Yardbird? Yardbird is a chicken. Uh, that's a southern term for them. Okay. So a bag of chicken. So uh, Cassie left a bag of chicken by the sink? Well, chicken ramen. It's like chicken flavored, but he would call it Yardbird is what I was getting with that. That's why I put in the bit uh, translation. <laughs> the, the next line. Oh, okay. Oh, I do. Okay. Yeah.
that works. <clears throat> now, if you cut this part, I might be mad. <laughs> 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 Sorry, it's a um, no, 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 no. I repeat the word in a stream of muttered utterances, the single syllable bleeding into the next until I sound like a motorcycle idling. I like idling motorcycle. I'm also just kidding. I don't know if you're even going to accept this, uh, this, the end of this chapter, but <clears throat> man, I got a lot to, still got so much to read. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, just catch up tomorrow, I guess. Uh, Oh, I missed Haley left. I missed that. Next chapter so far is already 26 7, 70. What's that? So the next chapter is already 26 70. Okay. Wow. Good luck, Alec. I hope you hope you find someone for your pitched book.
Kona Awad. Welcome, Alec.
Okay, I figure it's <clears throat> from the moment that the boys leave um, until they get home. I'm I'm guessing is maybe a half hour. Okay. So, um, should we? Ha can you think of some kind of filler in there to where we can have the uncle? Because the uncle didn't leave until after they left. Right. And then we have them coming home, essentially just moments after Cassidy gets home. Can you think of something that we could? I'm also to? I'm also seeing Cooter since uh, if you want to use what I was talking about with Shane walking by Cooter's house twice, like the first time he goes to the carnival, the second time Cooter's obvious Cooter obviously lives close because um, he would be walking by that on his way to the carnival. Um, so maybe Cooter just lives right around the corner. And uh, I mean, we it wasn't that far, anyways. Um, I don't I don't know. That's a that's a good one, but I don't know if it needs anything more. Like, at what point does it? I don't know. Um. What if we uh, maybe have these guys? Um, what, what if we have him like, uh, what's his name? Shane starts, tackles the dishes, uh -huh. you know, gets, get something to eat, tackles the dishes. And then maybe they go, uh, <clears throat> they could go fishing or they could go, uh, 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 do something that they, that they do, that they do often. And then we can have this big chunk of dialogue that, that, shows maybe a, even a little bit more about who they are and uh, okay. what's going on in the house and not really an info dump, but just subtle, subtle things. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the meantime, we just forgot Jimmy. Sorry, brother. Jimmy's asking for screen, screen sharing. Oh, <clears throat> Ooh, sorry about that, man. Um, yeah, we can totally do that. Um, I suggest if we're going to do that, then uh, we need to end end the chapter. I don't know. How many words do we have in the first chapter? Because we're already on page 21. Um, um, first chapters are always longer, but I don't want to go over 5,000 words for that first one. Um, I don't know. I don't, uh, <clears throat> hmm. unless you wanted to, let's see. Um, I mean, unless you wanted to do something like if you wanted to do shorter chapters where like uh like ignoring ignoring what we have for the outline i mean we still have that outline just ignore the ch the words chapter one chapter two, chapter three um if we ended a chapter where it says hey um, lazy I mean, shit, we could end the chapter. If you want to go for short ones, we can end the chapter with the window breaking. And then that'll end on a cliffhanger that'll push people into the second one. Because we have a bunch of good stopping places. Yeah. I w yeah, we can do that. I was even, even before that, if like Cassidy comes to the, you know, he's, they just, Cassidy just takes off. Um, my cousin won't see me. He can't. He's too determined, and so am I. I'm the ninja now. Next chapter starts with nearest convenience store is three blocks away, or continue going. Sorry, Sorry and, I had a thought. Call the second. Call the second chapter with the actual, you know, Cassidy and the and the convenience store. Call that ninja shit. <laughs> I don't know why that that just popped into my head, but uh, I love coming up with chapter titles. <clears throat> Um, 
Um, dum, dum, dum. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with breaking it up. Uh, that's an easy way also. Like I said, if we have short chapters, they'll take anything. They'll take 65, anything around 65K. Uh, whereas if we have longer ones, then, you know, 70K. Right. So, yeah, I'm all, I'm all for that. I'm, I don't see any problem with that at all. Because that that would still make if you want to stop it, stop the first chapter where you said, with him uh, running off, mm -hmm. and then go into, yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, let's do that. Then. At least just for right now. Okay. And then this is the best part about not numbering chapters. You don't have to update them over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, and then right at and then end the next chapter with I'm going to jail. I like that. I, I don't know how you feel about that, but I like that. I don't know. I mean, I get it because it's a cliffhanger, but it's I mean we could. But I the other one <clears throat> You've read way more books than I have. Uh, I just do my chapters, not really based on anybody else's books, but I, I don't. I maybe I don't pay attention all that much to to that kind of thing. Even though the first chapter ends, where we are doing like a, um, we're still starting the next one. Like uh, it's still very linear, but also it it seems between the two sentences that a moment has passed at least. Whereas if we start a chapter after I'm going to jail, which is a great, you know, ending for the chapter, it's still in the exact same moment. You know, I drop out of the window and enter into a catcher's. Oh yeah. That people do that quite often. They're, they're, you know, cliffhanger chapters that jump to much farther. And then there's ones that pick up like Dean Koontz does it all the time. Um, he'll have a cliffhanger that then the next chapter picks up like a week later. And then he, he'll like, travel back and fill in the blanks but it'll also have ones that cut off in a cliffhanger and picks up the moment the the next moment in the next chapter uh james that's all james patterson does um and most thriller writers do it like that so hey derek how you doing what if we kept the chapter going and then edit it at um right there damn, maybe he is a ninja. And then we could uh, we cut off the rest of that. And then, um, like, everything underneath. <laughs> okay. Uh, cut the next, what, four lines off. And then, yeah. um, and then start our, uh, the thing I was talking about, where they go out and they, or they do the dishes. Do the yeah. dishes. Maybe, um, gosh, I cannot, Cassidy starts helping you know he helps them and then they go do the thing that they'd like to do sometimes where they're hanging out and then we have this moment between the two and in the meantime as they're doing the dishes uncle travis is like i'm you know i'm out of here yeah i'll be back later okay and then they do the dishes and then maybe they uh uh fishing feels cliche i don't know um but so does like chucking rocks at you know, junkyard yeah. cars um which is another thought i had uh 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 okay i got an idea what if um they have their own little personal very small uh like pet cemetery that's just like you know this was this hamster here this was I, uh, a snake that we caught in the woods that we kept in a bucket for a week. Um, and then this is, here's this dog. It's like a, you know, an unofficial, you know, like everybody who has owned pets 
usually like we've got a spot you know mm -hmm. in our house and stuff that's i mean it's not called a pet cemetery but it's just like yeah this is where our dogs are that we've had what if there was an old like run down shack or a burned down trailer or or whatever that they hang out in and they have something like that like out back of it or whatever like almost like a clubhouse that they've come across because uh we had a lot of that stuff uh when i was growing up and i put it in several different things like the westerns and bay's end was a real place um there's numerous things uh that we used to go to old rundown buildings dilapidated apartments houses uh all, all that stuff maybe there's something down the way a piece where they hang out but i do like the idea of that thing like the the pet cemetery the unofficial pet cemetery thing i do like that because then we can build up you know while they're hanging out there chatting or whatever um we can build up all of that with like not flashbacks but memories of the things that they caught and, and did I, I like the idea i love the idea but maybe it's maybe it's not just a spot in the woods maybe there's something else there but that they go to that they're drawn to just because kids like abandoned buildings yeah i love, I love that idea let's do an abandoned building whether it be and let's not call it a cemetery. It's called a graveyard, just so yep. that there's no pet cemetery yeah. thing. Um, yes. And it will be, it's not like a community graveyard. It's just that this is where the last four years since since uh, Shane's lived here, this is where they've gone to have their own little funerals, whether they found a bird that crashed into a window, what, what have you. It's just kind of like this, their little uh, getaway where they kind of, you know, maybe it's a loft in a barn and they sit up their their uh oh, legs jingled that, over. That sounds they, that sounds great. I like that can, barn idea. They can look down at the little different sized stones where various, you know, everything from a well loved dog to a bird that crashed into their window, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, it shows love, that they shows that they have heart and that they yeah, care. Yeah, I love everything about that. Yeah, let, let's do that. Um so that'll be um That'll be after uh, at the beginning of this next chapter. After ooh, uh, Dan, ooh. maybe he is. In... Call it. Call the chapter "Grave Matters." Okay. Grave matters. That's ah, like it. what did I just do? I don't know. I, I didn't delete something, did I? Hang on. If you had something, uh, if you had something, uh, all I did was hit enter. Highlighted, then maybe. Well, if you hit enter, all I saw was it moved down. But okay, I don't think anything disappeared. You can always hit, uh, what is it, control D. Yeah, let me do that. See where it takes me. Yeah, okay. It was just a space. It was, okay. I was, okay, my cursor was sitting up here behind I'm going to jail. So, mm -hmm. so we don't want to do that one. We want to get down here to, damn, maybe he's a ninja. And then. That'll, that'll be Grave Matters. Grave Matters. Hell yeah. I like that shit a lot. And then we'll get we'll get rid of this. I really like that bit about the shopping unseen invisible opponents. My <clears throat> yeah, I did too. But no, I put dude, it's in here. Or did I just oh wait, did I just Yeah, that's oh, part of the thing that you that I you did cut. just take it out. Um We could uh, move it up if you want to keep it, but uh, let me. Uh, yeah, let's. I, I got copied to my. That's fine. Thing here. Let me... Yeah, and then. Okay. We'll, and put, then we'll this... put it right here. This is a better spot for it anyway. Right mm -hmm. after he talks about the Bruce Lee thing. Yeah. And then I'll move. I'm trying to think of what I'm going to call the dishwasher chapter. Anyways, great we'll, we'll matters, right? Are you so you want that to you want that to naturally go from grave matters, or are are they after the dishes are done? That's when they go to the thing because the chores are done. Yeah, they start to do dishes. Uncle Travis is like, I'm out. They they finish gotcha. the dishes. 
they're like we're out or whatever you know and they take off we probably don't announce because they these parents don't care so they're probably just in and out of the house all day without saying where they're going right and then uh yeah then they go to um the, the barn okay All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a another chapter title down here. This sucks. Um, I I don't know how we're gonna fit this in. You might not even like it, but I wrote like another three pages of a scene where um, he's vacuuming and he finds uh, one of his mother's earrings in the carpet. Mm -hmm. And then he rushes off to the room that he shares with Cassidy and he finds that someone has stolen, someone in the house has stolen uh, his mother's jewelry box, which doesn't make any sense because it was all costume jewelry. Um, and then there's a little bit of a, uh, I don't know. There, there, I don't know if you, if you want to keep That's a great it. idea, dude, because then that's also a huge catalyst for you. Oh, you're going to take my mother's crap? Exactly. Guess what I'm doing with this cocaine? Exactly. And uh, I, I kind of fell in love with this part, but uh, hang on. Let me let me get to it. Um, it's after he finds that it's gone from his drawer. It says, my, my chest is a ball of agony, my pulse crashing in my ears. Sweat greases my forehead and rolls into my eyes, mixing with tears, burning, stoking the fire already raging inside me. Fuck y'all. Fuck y'all. And I hope every single one of you assholes die in a fire. Then mom's voice in my head, telling me to calm down, assuring me it's not so bad, followed by visions of me standing beside her at a flea market as she picks through costume jewelry, one of my arms wrapped tightly around her thigh, refusing to budge an inch as she haggles with the guy behind the table, talking him down from $3 to one, then finally to two bucks, and they're shaking hands and we're walking off, a smile on both of our faces, because she has new bobbles and I have her laughter echoing in my head, the good sounds. Mm, love it. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I wanted more. I wanted to kind of give the feel of how important that stuff was because you know these are only memories without saying how important it was, kind of thing. Um, but I love that it's costume jewelry. It's not worth anything, but it is right. to him. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I wanted to drive home. It's not about the jewelry. It's the principle of the matter that it was something important to him. Mm -hmm. It's a good memory, so on and so forth. But um, I was hoping to at least keep that. Um, I went on a fucking diatribe about this vacuum that Bethany basically stole. And <laughs> I don't know if you're going to like it or not, but it, I just ran with it, dude. It's uh, I, I have it. I have the chapter now called this sucks, <laughs> but it's, it's uh, him vacuuming with this vacuum. I, I like explaining for some, for whatever reason, when we're dealing with people who are tight on money, I love explaining how they get items, like how they get things that, you know, they shouldn't, shouldn't be able to afford and, and whatnot because we i did a lot of that when i was younger and when i became homeless you know every every single item was acquired not necessarily in a nefarious way but you know a way that you wouldn't expect and that's the kind of experiences i like bringing into my work <clears throat> nothing's actually purchased we do what we got to do right. i was also a, a rainbow vacuum salesman for two days uh, only sold one and I felt terrible about the one that I sold because I literally talked this old woman into it and I knew she couldn't afford it, but I still talked her into it. Um, and then I only made like 15 bucks off the sale and I was like, fuck that. No, I'm out of here. I had a great, we got one of those phone calls where it's like, you want to, you know, your uh, have one of your rooms, you know, vacuumed. Yeah. <laughs> and I had never dealt with a vacuum salesman before. It was rainbow guy. And he yeah. came in. And as promised, you know, did the did the room, uh, shampooed the whole room, vacuum, and but did his spiel, and this was a two hour thing. And I realized, partially the way through it, that um, I I now know what you're doing here. <laughs> and he was good. We really wanted this thing, you know, because uh, we have dogs and and we don't want hair all over and stuff and. Yeah. Um, but it was something we couldn't afford. I'm like, you know, you want thirteen hundred dollars for this or whatever it was for this vacuum? I was like, dude, that's, it was, that's a vacuum. It was seventeen fifty when I did it. Seven one thousand seven hundred fifty so bucks. We got another phone. So I told him, you know, we'll we'll you know, don't call us, we'll call you. But uh, and I'm too nice of a guy to uh, like 
to have kicked him out or anything. So I let him do his thing. It was very kind. You know, we uh, showed him lots of hospitality. And when he was done, finally, you know, I let, you know, but the second time that we got one, I told my wife, I said, um, we got another one of these calls and I made an appointment. And, and I said, um, when they get here, we're not sitting through this whole thing. It's not fair to, because we're not getting the vacuum. We knew we yeah. weren't going to. So the, as soon as I answered the door, I said, I, you know, I said, hi, you know, uh, thanks for coming. I just want you to know. Uh, I, I, I've had one of these demonstrations before. And to be perfectly honest, you're here to clean this room and I'm not buying this. So you might as well save your words. And the guy never said anything. He, he did, he didn't, you know, normally it's salesman would still like kind of push you and that kind of thing. Nothing. Total silence. The whole time he, I could just almost hear him cussing me under his breath. <laughs> We freaking work so hard on that room. Pack yeah. this crap. Walk out the door. Uh, the way I was trained, and this still, like, I don't even believe it. The way we were trained, uh, it was just me, and I was placed with this other guy. The dude trained me to ask people to let let us in, and then as soon as we got in, you would dump something on their carpet, and it's they they get upset, of course. And mm -hmm. it's like, that's what we're here for. Or, or you, the, the guy did to one person where he dumped a cup of coffee grounds between the lady's legs onto her. He couldn't do that to everybody because not everybody has carpet in their foyer. Mm -hmm. But you know, he would have this stuff ready and he would literally just throw it on the ground. It's like, now let me show you what this thing can do. And that's how you got in. Um, because most people are not going to be like, fuck off. They're going to be like, clean this shit up, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then he would start going into his spiel and he would mm -hmm. take as long as possible to get to to get to the point which was the fucking thing cost 1750 bucks when most people you know just buy a 50 to 100 dollar vacuum cleaner from fucking target but uh yeah at, after all that man the way the way he treated customers um to you know to get into their houses i was like i i can't do i can't do this shit um i spent uh another one i spent like three days at buckmasters which is literally just a magazine about hunting. I'm sure you you might be familiar with, but um, I and I had to work on Thanksgiving, and I literally had to call people on Thanksgiving because so many people were home. Um, that was my last day was on Thanksgiving because I called people and damn near most of them cussed me out. It's like, do you realize what day it is? That kind of thing. Um, and I always felt like such a fraud because the script would start off. How are you doing today? Um, so on and so I'm so and so forth from Buckmasters. Right, 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 right. Um, and how many deers have you? How many deer you got? How many deer you get lately? I can st I still can't say, it, but they had a very specific way, so you sounded as country as possible talking to them. And I am definitely not country. It got I I even used Earl a couple times um, when I was doing it when I was first building that voice, mm -hmm. but um. I hold up one, one lady and the lady's like, you do know it's Thanksgiving, right? Um, I, I only answered because I thought you might be someone saying that calling the saying they're late. I'm like, no, ma'am. And, uh, is, and then if you get caught with the, the wife is what they put on the paper, the, the script He's like, is your husband around? I'd love to talk to him about it. And she's like, uh, he's enjoying dinner with his family. And I suggest you go and do the same. I was like, Damn. Yeah. I didn't even get a chance to say have a good day or I'm sorry or anything like that. And it just it hit me like a brick. I'm like, I am the asshole here. Yeah. I am an I, asshole. <laughs> I had a telemarketing job that was uh um that paid well and I was really happy to have this job at the time because it, it paid more than I had gotten in a while. And uh yeah, Buckmasters was great too for pay. It was, it was that it was that kind of thing where it's just like this job is not for me and i got fired because i wasn't assertive and i lasted three days and i was in a room <laughs> full of you know a, a bunch of other people and we're just all making and we're trying to sell tickets to a concert for the gel group which is like some firefighter firefighters group and we're supposed to uh fill them with guilt about uh house yeah. fires and, and deaths and, and all this kind of stuff and I was so shocked that, you know, and these are all cold, cold calls. I was mm -hmm. so shocked at how many uh, people had 
oh, I just found out I, I, I mean, they, I just found out I had cancer. I can't afford to, you know, or my husband just passed away or my husband is sick or they don't want you to take no for, and I would always be like, I am so sorry to hear that. I hope that, you know, your day goes better, blah, blah, blah. Sometimes I would talk to him a little bit longer with nothing to do about the, the, the ticket sales. Right. And, uh, they called me in the office and they're like, cause they listened to you for your first oh, yeah. while, I, you're I, on, I while you're on probation. And I was at, at the time I was extremely bummed cause I needed the money really bad. But after a while in hindsight, I was proud that I got fired from that job because I wasn't an asshole essentially. I, ironically, the concert tickets that I was, I was selling was for a band called uh, the grassroots and the guitarist for the grassroots an old 60s band. Mm -hmm. The guitarist for the grassroots is Creed from The Office. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So it's Creed's fault. It's Creed's fault. <laughs> um, it, it's funny that I quit. I didn't quit at that moment, but uh, I didn't have any more calls that day. And I went home. I came back the next day, and Eminem's uh, album Encore had just come out at the time. So I, am, I stopped by uh, Target bought the album and I'm listening to it in the car and I'm enjoying it. But literally that album is the whole reason why I didn't go back inside. I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm enjoying this and I want to finish it. That's what I was telling myself. It's like a subconsciously trying to talk myself into losing this job. And I'm sitting out there in the parking lot and I'm listening to it. And it's obvious. I got several songs left and it's time for me to go in. I'm like, just one more song. I'm sitting there and I'm not even thinking about how bad I felt the day before. I'm just like, one more song. And it wasn't until the album ended and I was already 20 minutes late for work. I was like, I guess it doesn't matter if I go in or not at this point. So I might as well just go home. So I left and they never called me or anything. I got a check uh, in the mail like three weeks later. Um, but uh, yeah, it's that is some life sucking ass work um, selling selling anything. And of course, like you said, they don't want you to accept no for an answer. Um, yeah. and you know, there's a whole script. If they, yeah. if they say they're, they're sick or whatever, skip to page three, read this. Yep. Yep. It's like, man, come on. You're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. Um, it's the same thing at Buckmasters and it was just a, it was a fucking hunting magazine. It wasn't <laughs> that serious. And all of the sales that I did get were with, for, from the wives who had husbands who hunted. And, uh, I don't want to say they were gullible, but they were so much easier to sell than the husbands. And that's why mm -hmm. they wanted you to focus. If, if she, if she seems like a loving, doting wife, you know, there's a whole script part of there. Um, and if not, it's like, can I talk to your husband deal? Um, and I even called some people who were like, he's been dead for three years. I don't know why you guys keep calling. I'm like, we will take you off the list, knowing damn well that I didn't know how to take him off the list. I just end the call. Because like you said, they're all cold calls. You don't know what you're getting. You, you have no idea. You just go from one to the next, and they, they just kind of all blend in the background. There's no humanity in, the, in in it in the process whatsoever. It's just mm -hmm. soul-sucking work. Anyways. Yeah, I, I remember that first rainbow guy. He also, part of his tactic was to make us feel, my wife and I feel like we lived in just a nasty house. Yeah. And so he would suck. You know, he would suck up part of the carpet and then they'd put that black cloth, you know, on there so that you could Ours see. Was white, I but was... I know what you're talking. Yeah. How much is going through there? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, look at this. Is this really how you live? Is this how you want to live? And I'm Ooh, like, oh, boy, I've been like, you can get the fuck out right now. <laughs> like, that's, so, that's the worst possible thing you can you can do to me is me. Like when I go shopping for like cars or big budget items, I dress in like sweatpants and a ratty T-shirt, um, because if you're not going to treat me like a human being. Um, I, I learned that from my mother. Um, if you're not going to treat me like a human being, I, I've gone to places, you know, $10,000 cash wanting to buy a vehicle right then and there. They didn't know that. But, you know, I've, I've gone up to them and like uh, it, it not gone up there, but I've gone to a car lot and no one's approached me or someone who uh, I, I do remember this one very specifically. The, uh, one time I went to a new car lot. I had the money, was looking for a certain thing. And the guy came up to me and asked me, uh, no, not asked me, told me where the used car lot was. It's like, we got some used cars that are cheaper back here in the back. And I'm like, no, that's good. I'm, I'm done later. And then I went like three uh, places down and bought a brand new, uh, as a P blue PT Cruiser. 
Um, but that, that guy screwed himself out of a whole sale because he was, he, he thought I was broke because I wasn't, you know, in like a fucking suit or something. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I don't wear jewelry, so I have no other status symbols on me. It's just sweatpants or sweat shorts. I can't remember which, um, and a, t and a ratty ass t-shirt. But yeah. Hey, Solvent. I think I'm done. I need to get out of this chair. We've been here almost four yeah. hours. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have been here for a very long time. Yeah, this one's been more like the chattening instead of the uh, the writing. This is what I titled the episode, but I'll probably yeah. change it in the VOD. Uh, did, did you want me to send you the, the videos so you can um, post on your own end? Nah, you don't have to do that. Okay. Whoops. It's super easy. I just there like add them to Dropbox or Google Google Docs or whatever, and then you can delete them every time once you download them. But whatever you want to do. I ain't talking to you anymore. <clears throat> Anywho, all right, so thank you guys. Uh, is there anything you want to say before we go, Chad? No. I still need to tell you what author I was talking about after we yeah. sign off here. I got to remember that. Uh, yeah, I got a shitload done this morning. Time for lunch. Yeah, I'm about to go eat too. Um, all right, Chad and chat. It was another great session. We got a lot of stuff in play that we can use to extend this and still keep it interesting. I love that we settled on shorter chapters with cliffhangers. I love that idea because <clears throat> we can still be literary and do, do that. You know, we can still have the chunks of, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that we've been doing. All right. Thanks for joining us. We will see you guys on Monday. Yes. Time to watch the VOD. Uh, we'll be back on Monday. I'm taking tomorrow off, but we are doing Sunday service. We're doing movie night instead of game night. So we're watching something on Tubi tomorrow. I haven't pulled a, anything out of the hat to figure out what we're watching. But we'll, we will be watching a movie. You guys can watch it along at home. I'm not going to be streaming the movie. Um, we'll just be hanging out watching them on our own devices. Are you watching good movies or bad movies? I don't know yet. I'm going to literally – I asked my I asked Discord for suggestions, and I threw them all into a hat, wrote them all down, and I'm going to be oh. picking something out. So I don't know oh. if it's going to be something terrible or something good. Okay. Um, but you're more than welcome to come, of course. Well, I had a, I just had the perfect selection if you were going to do bad movies. Uh, but I, yeah, okay. What, what you got? I'll throw that. I'll, I'll throw it's, it in there. It's a movie called L.A., as in Los Angeles. Yeah. L.A. AIDS Jabber. <laughs> it's about... <laughs> a AIDS Jabber? <laughs> yes, it's a very, very low-budget movie about a dude who finds out he has AIDS, gets really pissed off, and starts... Taking a sample of his, of his own blood, going around and stabbing people. That's what with. I thought. That's what I thought you. That's where I thought you were going. I'm gonna put it in the hat. And it's worse than now, you think it is. I, I really, I really hope it is. Honestly, I, I, if nothing else, I'm gonna watch it on my own because that. Holy shit! Just the name alone. That's amazing. Anyway, the dialogue so is the worst you've ever. The acting and the dialogue is. Just top-notch, horrible. Like worse uh, than the room and go not Goblin. What is it was it Goblin Two? Anyways, or yes, Troll Two. Yes, Troll worse, Two. Yes, way worse than that. Oh wow! Shot on yeah. video. No. <laughs> yes. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm looking it up as soon as I get off here. So, what was the first one again? It was. What was the name of it? I got Age Jabber. What was what came before L that? L A. L A. Los Angeles. Okay, so L A. I don't have anything to write on. L.A. Age Jabber and not Stabber? Right, right. L.A. Oh, my God, dude. Jabber. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. All right, looking it up after this. I could have just typed it into my search bar and went back to it. But All right. Oh, him disappeared. Yeah, Troll 2. I keep, I keep, I always want to call it Goblin 2 because of Neil Bog. So. Like, is he gone? Did he just, like, leave? Not possible? Uh, I didn't think it was possible to get worse than The Room and, uh, and Troll 2. You're muted. Can't hear you. Oh, that's why you can't hear me say, <clears throat> yeah. yeah, dude, I'm right here. Okay. Oh, my God with the fly and everything on his face. Yeah, it's amazing. Anyways, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we will be back Monday, 9 a.m. to keep this going, and the VODs will continue to release uh, basically every other day. Probably Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday is what the vlog. Uh, can I steal it as a title? What thing? What? 
I don't know. Anyways, bye, y'all. Uh, until next time, all hail the chair.